usually before you hear a piece that you've heard before. Tonight is a world premiere. Are you nervous? Of course, I'm terrified. <laughs> and I, and I'm terrified all the time. Now, what, what does it mean to, kind of, to, to get a commission from the League of Composers, this sort of veteran, august group of your peers, to create a piece for them tonight? Um, I feel very old. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I, it, it feels great. I'm honored. I, I don't know what to say beyond you know, the cliches that everybody uh, who's asked that question that I could come up with. Uh, I, I am just very honored also to be in the company of these incredible musicians. I just took this as an opportunity to write a piece for a pianist that I really like, <clears throat> who's, who's playing I really, really like and with an instrument that I, that I really like. In, uh, in that case, in this case, it's orchestra. So it's really not much more than that. Right. I try to think of myself as a composer who just writes music every day and not thinking more than that. But it is, it does help to have a particular, I mean, Ellington used to say, I don't write for a trumpet or a trumpet. I write for Cootie Williams. I write for that guy there. Are you? Yes, yeah, so yeah, of course, I was thinking of Daniel's uh, specific playing uh, uh, when, I, when I wrote this piece. And also, about, his personality, uh, uh, those who know him know what I'm talking about. So at least that's a little bit of that. Well, enlighten those of us who don't. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't, I don't know if Daniel would like me to say that. No, no, he's, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's a very playful, but hidden, uh, concealed playfulness is what is.
dates on this piece, this concerto for oboe, 1976 and 2003. Yes. When you come back to a work that's over a quarter century old, yes. a lot has happened in music, a lot has happened in your life. How different is this piece from the original? It is not much different from the original. I composed it for Noah Post originally. It was a wonderful oboist and because of a bad ailment, she could never play again. A real tragedy. And my oboe concerto was sitting there for large orchestra and the solo oboist. And I showed it to many oboes who would have liked to play it, but they said an orchestra, who can afford an orchestra? So I said, well, I'll change the orchestration. At first, it was performed at the Manhattan School of Music, and I had it then done for two pianos and percussion and oboe. And uh, then I, of course, wanted to have something like an orchestra. I decided to make it into a chamber orchestra work, and that's what you need to do. Thank you. 